today is Instant Vintage 78. I'm Stacy, And I'm Samantha. And we are here today to go over with you our estate sale haul. So, first of all, we want to talk about the fact that we had an awesome day today. Like, we definitely bounced from thing to thing to thing. It's Halloween, so we got some pleasurable things in for us. And we also did some things for our children as well. Um, so first, we went to an estate sale. First things first. That part. Went and got the booty. <laughs> went and grabbed the booty. That part. Um, and then after that, we went to Kitchen Cray. They had a Halloween event. The kids got to dress up in their costumes, costumes get yeah. candy, amazing food, of course. And then we traveled out to Waldorf to go see our Spice sister, Charismatic Creations, Chrissy. And we got this beautiful, well, we got a few yeah. beautiful mixes. Several. Um, this one is citrus, nutmeg, and ginger. ginger. And, and it's delicious. It's delicious. And we have our cocktails here. Oh, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm. So let's get it started. So the last time we bought you guys a haul, uh, we went to the thrift store. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk first about the difference between going to a thrift store and going to an estate sale. First of all, estate sales are very um, competitive. Absolutely. So when we pulled up, first of all, there was already a line when we pulled up. A lot of times when you get to an estate sale, there's either a number system or a sign up system. Sometimes people camp out like camp out like real like camp overnight out, like, in the car literally type. depending on what the What's sale there? is giving you know so yes so obviously by the time we got there there was there were cars pulling up there was a line of people at the door a list was was going on Crazy. so you know we woke up <laughs> we signed up oh tell them about the guy who cut through the grass yeah so this, this is, is how cut throat. this is how dog eat dog it is so <laughs> the, so we're we all pulled there's a group of cars that all pull up at the same time um we were probably the second car so there was a car in front of us and then there was our car then it was two cars behind us man we woke up so we have the people in front of us we try to be like try to be considerate because i just know how bad the thrift store i'm not thrift store excuse me estate sale wars are like people get into flat out arguments like, and fist fights occasionally so but you, don't you, be you try to like tread lightly so the guy that was in the very last car we're all walking up there's a shrubbery there's a line a driveway a driveway so we walk the proper way like you know how we do we go through the driveway we don't no, walk on the grass main man you know, main man beeline <laughs> He cut through the grass, over the through, shrubbery. Through the shrubs. <laughs> yeah. And he got his name on the list fast. <laughs> First. So that's how um, crazy it can get. It can get very crazy when it comes to estate sales. Mm -hmm. So just beware. Don't think that you're going to go and it's going to be holly lolly. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's not what it mm -hmm. is. When it comes to estate sales, there are a lot of collectors there. There are collectors that go for fine arts, books, um, gadgets tools newspapers clothing. magazines there are people that glassware there are people that go for very specific things yeah, very niche yes items. and they are they're typically business owners which is crazy because typically everybody is there for resale and they will try to talk to you and find out what you're there for so they can kind of see if you're competition or not so just be prepared for that it just yeah, is what yeah, it is. Absolutely. Tell no one nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Don't give them any yeah, information. No. Just be really general with people. They, um, at its best. But, however, so of course we went. We went for two reasons. First of all, go ahead and tell them what the draw was for you. Okay. So the way we even find out about these estate sales is we we have we um have downloaded an app called EstateSales.net. Like. It is like back in the day, you used to have to comb through like newspapers, newspapers. and things like that. Those days are gone. The Thank classifieds. You know. Some of y'all don't even know no. what the classifieds 
are again we're dating ourselves but yes we used to literally like get newspapers and comb through the newspapers to find the estate sales but now there's an app there's an app for that <laughs> called estatesales.net you go on the app so got the app went in so the first thing that like really drew um me in was the jewelry like the there were cocktail rings and when i say cocktail rings i'm talking about fine jewelry cocktail rings like exquisite statement jewelry pieces i said oh yes and when you go into the app you can like favorite certain items like you can just like tap the little heart so it kind of prioritizes those items in your list you know so that was the first thing that drew me in then there was the clothing yeah and so typically this is funny typically i'm the jewelry person i any i think we talked about this last video mm -hmm. when we get to the thrift store we get anywhere i'd be lying for jewelry like that's my thing um this time we because she was drawn into the jewelry we made a plan okay second part of the rules for estate sales have a plan plan, plan have a plan your know uh, what you want your route and make sure even if you have to ask people um within this estate sale like today we wanted these fire gray cowboy boots oh they were nasty fire we were we were trying to bring you guys the, the heat. heat okay but they were size six and most people and nobody were size six. six and nobody we know we six. we got fry boots from 1970 that we've had since ninth what 2009 that we <laughs> are still they, sitting on us because they're too small for most people yeah so we had to as dope and that's another thing sometimes you're gonna you're gonna find things that are super duper dope but if you're if you're reselling you're gonna have to leave it behind so we had to learn the hard way we would find these cute shoes i mean stilettos and, and and um exotic skin shoes and we'd be like oh those are so nice let's grab it but guess what they sit for years and years and years and years because no one can fit them we well, still you, have them yeah and we, we won't donate them because they're that happy. i mean i'd rather donate them to a museum that's how dope they are like these are like collectors items museum worthy time pieces. period pieces so i'm not giving them we're not giving them to the thrift store we're gonna just sit on them until we figure yeah. it out but you know if you you're gonna you'll realize that some things as dope as they are they just, just they're just not gonna work it. and just it's leave not it gonna there. Move. yeah and so. if it's not gonna move leave no it point. So, I was in charge of the gray boots. I, you know, and because I was in charge of the gray boots, what I also made myself in charge of is the clothing. So, turn out as it is, actually, Samantha got to the clothing before I did because she saw the price on the jewelry. <laughs> uh, 950 yeah. was a common price on most of that like the medium yeah the median on the jewelry was, it was like 950 yeah, yeah, yeah it was like yeah, a yeah, thousand, thousand, thousand on average and i was like you know you know yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yes she got up to the clothing before i did because typically clothing is up in the upper level the bedroom so when i got in the house i beat line for the top of um the house like the upper floor and I'm looking around and I see no clothing, so I have to come downstairs, ask the lady, "Hey, where's the clothing? Like, wh wh where's the where are the great cowboy boots? Like, where?" Oh, I think they're back in the room. Okay, I'm down. But Samantha was already in the room, so pulling stuff. I was like, pulling oh. stuff, and then it got a little, you know, when we get together and we, we see oh, fly yeah. stuff, it, gets it, it got crazy. a little bit crazy in there today. It so gets crazy. So you guys, you know, if you've watched the last video, you know how we feel about loungewear and like lingerie and things like that. So this sale, yo, was like the holy grail of loungewear and and just dope, sexy nighties and things like that. So without further ado, I think we need to get into We need to get into it. it. All right. So let's do it like this. What was your, from the haul, what was your favorite piece? My favorite piece was this. Go around. So first of all, anybody that knows me, I am a Vic vintage Victoria's Secret fanatic. Like, 
I don't know what it is, but Vintage Victoria's Secret for me, it, it leads back to the days of young when I couldn't have lingerie, but I used to look at it like my mother had robes and stuff. And I used to be like, oh my God, why is this stuff so great? So in my older years now, for you know, I absolutely love Vintage Victoria's Secret. Without further ado, my favorite piece is this robe. It's and let me tell y'all why this is my favorite piece. Okay, first of all, and okay, look at that. Yes. Okay. The um, black piping. Black piping. And it's roped. Duh. It's the um, details. And then us. it is totally the details. So on this side of there's a belt. On this side of the belt. They did a green pattern. And then on this side of the belt, they did a maroon burgundy-ish pattern. Not only that, but this is, is it's like total women's menswear. Yes. And I'm a tomboy at heart. I love anything that lends to femininity and masculinity at the same Listen, time. and it's giving like major Hugh Hefner vibes. Hugh Hefner. But Hugh Hefner for a woman. The grand dame. What is it called? The madam. Mm -hmm. It's giving madam vibes. Madam. It's giving run me my money. It's, it's that part. So that's what my favorite piece was. Yours? Alright. You know my favorite. Is, I think she knows what my favorite. Well, <laughs> I had two favorites. I had two favorites, actually. And you can show them both. Okay. So, my two favorites were... Okay. So, this was the first one. Okay. Mm, wash your drink. So, this... Yo, you oh, I'm not going to disturb the drink. Mm -mm. Okay. So, this one is a two-piece. So, it's... um, It has... And the woman at the estate so told us the name of this. It started can, with a P and we like don't know what that means. Or something she said. I was like, ooh. I should have wrote it down, but I didn't want to look like I didn't know what I was, you know. <laughs> that we it was were really, like, uh huh, yes. But it has this like baby doll oh. type of um, dress to it. It is just so dainty and it's so lovely. You and see the that lace ribbon and the satin ribbon and the like the tool, the tool like it is beyond sad. okay. And then it has the matching robe that goes to it. I'll put it back I'll on. I'll hold the this. Okay. Well, I'll put it back. You want to put it? Okay. Oh yeah. It has the matching robe that um, same, you know, it's, has the same tool fabric and then the lace around the neck and the, and the puff. It's like a little puff sleeve. It is just phenomenal. Like, it is so cute. We saw this on the site and this was actually one of the pieces that drove the decision to even visit the estate sale. So this is definitely uh, like just yeah. a piece of magic it's right there. Yes. It's a, it's a whole entire yes. And then the second piece. Now, this wasn't on the estate sales site, but when I got there, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a vintage uh, Victoria's Secret, right? And apparently it's a slip. So it has like a flared, flouncy kind of bottom, but the bodice is lacy and it has like little pearls in it. But the strap, let's get into the strap. It's it's like braided. It is so amazing. And there was an older woman in the estate sale. And when she saw it, she was like struck by it. And she was like, oh, that's a slip. Those are like the slips. And those are like the slips we used to wear way back in the day. Um, so she was like really smitten with it. And kind of, it, it was like really nostalgic for her to see such a an old-fashioned slip but this is like vintage Vicky's and it is coming to a virtual sale near you near you this one that I want to highlight that I just can't you know first of all when we saw this on the site um I thought it was like a bad sequin job I'm not gonna lie to you I really I was like Ugh, who would wear that 
but it is not a bad sequin job. It is actually a threaded lame jacket, which I mean, I like the finer things in life. So <laughs> this definitely gives like, there's money in the room. Yeah. But does it look like money? But does it look like money? That's so that's, question. you know, that's our question. That's what we, like, that should be like our hashtag. But yeah. does it look like money? But, and that'll, that will never steer you wrong. If you're ever getting dressed and you're like thinking about your outfit, like, is it right? The question to ask is, like, but does, does it, it look, look like, like money? money? And if the answer is no, take, take it off. off. Take, take okay. it off. Take it off and make it look like money. You'll never be disappointed. Yep. Okay. Like we said the last time. Did we say that last time or did we say that in our... We said this in our uh, podcast that we had with Kiana Armani. Shout out to Kiana Armani. She's dope. Uh, Indigo Absolutely. Blue Style. Mm -hmm. You're like the goal in every single time that you get dressed up should be money. Like... You could have on a seven dollar outfit if it looks like a thousand to a million. You did right. What's best about vintage is you can end up looking like money without pretty much any money being put on the table. Like you can look the part, and it's not about looking like the part, but it's just making sure that you are well put together. Listen, when you have style, you don't need a lot of money. Like you Erica don't. Badu has a, a line in the song where she said. My dress cost nothing. My dress ain't cost dollars. nothing but seven dollars, but I made it fly. And, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm clever. When yeah. you have style, you really can make a ten dollar outfit look like a million bucks. Um, so let me. Sh let's. We're gonna show you a couple more items and then log out. But um, like, I wish we could show you everything, but the it would just take too you long. You guys would be so bored with us if we yeah, because we got a lot. So. Even though these items were out of season, we just absolutely had to have them. And hey, whether you, you might go on a vacation, you might go to, you know, be laying on someone's resort in a, in a little while. Because we all want to go on to a resort. Like, we all want to book vacations. And we're, I'm going to just keep my two cents to myself on that one. But this was one of, um, so this straw hat right here. Y'all, I'm not going to actually put it on my head because, you know, we have to clean it and sanitize it and everything. But this piece right here, come mm. on. Come on. Like. It's the business. It, yeah. It just has so much attitude. It's like, yeah, see me, know me. You might decide to get rid of the string. You might decide to use the string. It's, it's all up to or you. Or you might but... put a different type of string. I was just thinking when I was looking at it, like. I saw a hat today, like a fedora, and it had like a pearl accent. Like, you can do a lot with that. Yeah, that that's the absolute must. You want to show them the other one? Yes. All right, so, so we got two. This is the other one, which, like, <laughs> I'm in love with. And again, I, we're not going to put it on our heads because... But it's the whole Panama Jack. Like, if you guys... Dating ourselves again. But if you guys remember, there was a whole season where Panama Jack was the thing. This is like one of those structured hats that pff, straw, fly, dope. Yeah. Like just yeah, get and, into yeah, it. Yeah, great hats and great accessories are literally like icing it's, on the cake. Like it's everything. You can have an outfit that's okay. You can have an outfit that's like completely dope. But when you put that proper topper on it, it's, it just kind of, it just topper. seals the deal. And you're like, yeah, you it certified, does. bona fide, that, mm. that part. <laughs> and right. then the, um, one more. One more. Collar? No? Oh, sure. You. Okay. Because you got on black and white and it looks better on you. So, one thing that we are suckers for, we never, whenever we go to an estate sale, we never pass up uh collars like fur collars are a must so we came upon this um red fur collar and it was just a done deal it was like it absolutely it was, there was no question like we saw it and simultaneously it was like yeah that that one that one that part so i'm gonna flip my hair back and the uh -oh. reason for the fur collars is because you can literally add them to anything in 
it's rich all of a sudden. Yeah. With a fur collar, all of a sudden, your whole outfit is rich. So what you can be wearing a sweater, you can be wearing a cardigan, you can be wearing a button up or a you jacket, can wear a, uh, a leather, a leather jacket, a uh, trench. It does not matter when you put a fur collar on it, you seal the deal. Yeah, it's just like instant elevation. Yeah. So we had to grab this. This is also coming to a sale near you or a website, our website pretty soon so one thing that is very important to know about an estate sale the more you buy the more you save mm -hmm. so if you go to an estate sale and you buy like one or two items they're going to be itemized if you want to get the most for uh for your bucket in an estate sale buy in bulk because once you buy in bulk sometimes it just throws people off like it's easy to count up five up, you know five items but when you're coming at them with like 30, 30. pieces they, they get, and it's and it's such a high pace, uh, um, like a fast paced environment. They don't want to. They don't want to count through all of that. So a lot of times, what will end up happening is they'll just see the the pile, the pile and just say, oh, "Can you give me this much?" You know, and like ten times out of ten, if you if you come at them with like a huge pile, you're going to get a ridiculously low price because. They're not in the mood to, to sift through and itemize. itemize. And they have a line full of people behind you. And they just don't want to do all of that. They're like, okay, okay, this is what it is. How about that? How does that? And you and haggle, haggle. So if they hit you with a number, say, mm, how about this? Just to show our own experience today, um, because she saw the amount of stuff that we had, her first, the first thing out of her mouth was, well, <laughs> I see that you guys have all of that, so whatever you guys do, I'm gonna give I'm you, gonna give you a, a discount. discount. So what I'll do is I'll add all this up and then I'll give you the discount on the end. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you understand that like if you're there because you wanna get a lot of stuff, make sure they understand like I'm gonna buy all of this. Yep. You should be getting it. The upside of estate sales is that um, unlike a thrift store, even though we love thrift stores, we're not down in thrift stores mm -hmm. by any means. You, you guys saw us do an entire haul from a thrift store. Yeah, we, but one of the upsides of estate sales is that because it belonged to a particular person, the items are typically um, well cared for. So at a thrift store, you really have to be really meticulous about checking the quality and the um, condition of things. Whereas at an estate sale, you still want to do the same thing, but these items were um a lot of times these items were really treasured by the owner so they're very well taken care of this they're in great condition um there's and you have a lot more quality to choose from so in a thrift store you really have to sift through you know to find them really high quality items whereas when you go to a, uh, an estate sale a lot of times when we go to estate sales what we do is it's almost like we brainstorm so we go in an estate sale and we just pull everything that we love it's like almost like a brain dump like I like this 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 because like there's so much and because so many people are there it, it, it literally is like a competition like you better get it while the getting is good before you can't get it anymore no more Jeez. exactly so you pull all that stuff and then once we have everything that we like in the pile then we edit from there like okay is this a must-have is this a kind of like you know then we pare down from there but yes there's there's a lot more quality in an estate sale and it makes it worth the line and it makes it worth the um chaos that can sometimes be in a estate sale but we totally encourage you all to um, experience an estate sale it is definitely a unique experience don't forget to download estatesales.net um you can put in your zip code and it will show you whatever estate sales are near you within whatever radius, radius, mile radius that, that you, you choose. choose and yeah like get out there experience it it's not there's nothing like it it's very it's like quite exhilarating and just the the treasures like the things that people really have and um the things that the families sometimes offer it's just outstanding so yes it's a history lesson and it is dope absolutely and there's there's some things when you're looking up estate sales there's some things that clue you into the fact that this is going to be a good sale as far as um and for us as far as it pertains to clothing so some of the um key features that we've noticed along you know like over the years if a person is a sewer 
So they in, in this clothing. case, this woman, she had um, the type of sewing machine she had. It indicated that she was a sewer. She had fabric. She had sewing machines. So a person that sews and a person that knows fabric and textiles and things like that, they typically have like really, really great taste in clothing. This was the case here. Other things to look for include um, uh, beautiful accessories. So if you ever see like hat boxes, opera glasses, things like that. If you see opera glasses, this was a fancy so-and-so and you might want to get to that sale because... And a lot of times the opera glasses are made of mother, mother of, of pearl. pearl. If you see a pair of mother of pearl opera glasses, you better you make better get your to that way sale. to that sale. Because okay? that girl got lots of stuff. Listen, um, other, what are some other like tall tale signs that this is an amazing sale beautiful furniture like if they are are saying or they're showing pictures of like settees and and mid-century like if they're showing pictures of great furniture and you know what's so crazy is the white word oriental art oriental art uh, yeah mm -hmm. Oriental art is something a that a lot of people that have money collect. Those are all things that you can look for in a state sale if, you, if you're deciding, mm, is it worth the trip? Because sometimes we travel an hour, you know, an hour and a half out of the way because if the sale looks like it's popping, it is very, very, very much worth making your way there. So I hope you find those hints um, helpful. I hope you love this stuff that we showed you. And, and we'll see you next stay time. Stay tuned. We will and be bringing this haul all of this to our um sale. Sale, yeah. 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 So stay tuned. All right. All right. Bye.